Come on, Miss uh, Sheena. I just want to thank the Lord for saving me. I'm thankful for being able to be here. I miss my church. I miss all of you, and I love all of you. Most of all, I love the Lord, and I'm just thankful for the opportunity to sing for him. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chain.
How many of you know this morning we serve a great God, amen? I tell you, he's not forgotten you during this time. It's so easy for us to get our minds focused on our situation and what's going on that we forget there's power in prayer. He's still waiting and he's wanting and yearning for you to talk to him, to hear your voice. This morning, why don't you think about lifting up your voices and praying to God this morning. I know it's so easy to get focused on this media, all this mess that they're pumping into our minds. This morning, let it all go. Give it to the Lord this morning. Let's worship together. Let's, let's have church this morning. Amen. Some just see someone down on their knees Talking to the air Words lost on a breeze Some just see teardrops fall to the floor Just a waste of time not anything more But it's a direct line To the throne room Where you can find Someone who cares And if you need some proof I can tell you there is power, power in prayer. How many of you believe that this morning? And I can tell you about the time the Lord gave me peace. With trouble all around, He calmed the storm in me. I remember when I cried out, he saved my soul, yeah. Some have a doubt, but I know that I know that I know that it's a direct line to the throne room where you can find someone who cares. And if you need some proof, I can tell you there is power, power in prayer. And he's always listening, yeah, that don't change. So don't miss this moment. To call on his name, but it's a direct line to the throne room where you can find someone who cares, and if you need some proof, I can tell you. There is power, power in prayer And it's a direct line to the throne room Where you can find someone who cares And if you need some proof, I can tell you there is power, power in
good to be here and sing for the Lord today. And I thank him that no matter what life there is in this world, if we have Jesus, we have everything. Thankful. Ray. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail pierced hands than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather old world affords today. I'd rather have Jesus than man's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name than to be the king of a vast domain. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this old world affords, affords today. All right, now can you hear me? <laughs> All right, I'm glad that there's none of us perfect. If you're perfect, you're welcome to go ahead and leave. Amen, praise God. It's good to be back on the premises of Victory Baptist Church of Denver. And I would like to say thank you for those beautiful songs. Well done. My, what a blessing. You know, I looked uh, on my phone this morning about, it's about 8.30, I guess, and uh, 
we've got cameras set up here. I can look, see what's going on down here anytime. And they was already down here working, getting things ready for the service today. I tell you, church, we are blessed with some people that love the Lord and people that's willing to work for the Lord. Praise God. All right. I tell you, I had those had to wear those shade glasses earlier. I, them Chevrolets, I didn't realize they sparkle so much in the sunshine. But anyway, uh, I took them off. I can see now fine. Thank God for this uh, cover here. I'll tell you what a blessing it is. And I saw Brother Larry Ballard sitting there. And uh, I'll give you folks uh, a little clue on something that might help you. He's got him a blanket, and it's on the east side of his car, which is the, this side over here. And he's got it tapered across the driver's side and the passenger's side. And that way it knocks out a lot of the heat. Larry, you are a very smart man. Amen. All right. Are you ready to worship the Lord tonight? Praise God. I tell you what, I believe Jesus is coming. I really do. I believe what's going on here today, it is a great trial of your faith. You know, Peter said the trial of your faith is more precious, more precious than gold. Think about that. The trial of your faith, it's more precious than gold. If you have your Bibles this morning, want to follow along with us? If you have your Bibles, want to follow along with us? Turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 5. We're going to be reading about one, two, about three or four verses of Scripture. And we want to deal with walking with God. You know, we can walk with God in the days of apostasy that we're living in today. We want to look at a man that walked with God, and God came and took him home. Amen. Genesis chapter 5, beginning with verse 21. And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah three hundred years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. I promise you that God will add his blessings to his precious word this morning. would like to say, as it's already been said, it's going to kind of get a little warm out there if it gets a little warm for you. Just crank up your engine for a little bit, and it won't bother me one bit, and it won't bother nobody around you. Want to deal with this simple thought this morning, walking with God. You know, Enoch, it's kind of amazing. Enoch didn't start walking with God until he was 65 years old, Brother Zach. He was 65 years old. I don't know what kind of life he lived up until he was 65, but I do know one thing. When that little boy was born, when Methuselah was born, something happened to Enoch. Something got a hold of him. And that ought to be uh, instructions to you and I. When you become a parent, you need to start walking with God. Enoch was 65 years old. He begot Methuselah, and he began to walk with God. There's something about the birth of that little boy. I don't know what it was, but it caused him to walk with God. All right. There's three books in the Bible. This is noteworthy. There's three books in the Bible that tells us just a little bit about Enoch. Just a little dab here and a little dab there and a little dab here. Okay? Genesis tells us about the manner of Enoch. And then if you go into the book of Jude, Jude tells us about the ministry of Enoch. And then, of course, Hebrews tells us about the move of Enoch, his translation, and that he pleased the Lord. Let me ask you a question before we start into the message this morning. 
Is your life pleasing unto the Lord? Folks, I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm a prophet of hope. I believe Jesus is coming. I believe what we're experiencing now, it's affected the whole world. And you know, the new world order that's going to come in place sometime right before or right at the rapture, it's going to happen. It's going to be one world order sometime right before the rapture or right after the rapture. This could be the curtain opening up, stage one of what we're fixing to experience. I'm looking for the return of the Lord, aren't you? If you're looking for Jesus, tap your horn, it's the real light. My wife, I seen she didn't tap it. <laughs> but she's still looking for the Lord. She's on the passenger side. We don't have a stirring wheel over there on that side. All right, now, first of all, let's look at Enoch's walk. Genesis chapter 25, verse 22, the Bible says that Enoch, I want you to think about this, Enoch walked with God. Now, let me say that again. Enoch walked with God. Enoch walked with God when the world was much like it is in the day we're living in. It's like it was in the days of Noah. Noah chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 tells us what it was like during Noah's days. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, Enoch didn't have a copy of the Word of God. Brother Boyd, Enoch never went to Sunday school. Enoch never went to an old-fashioned camp meeting. But Enoch walked with God. Boy, that ought to put a check on all of us. Enoch didn't have what we've got today. Enoch didn't have nobody to fellowship with. Only one person, and that was God. And that's really all that matters. He had God to fellowship with. Amen. All right. Matter of fact, all Enoch, all he had was God. And that's really, you know, that's all he needed. You know, this song, I believe, said, God is enough, ain't and that's all I need, something like that. And most of you folks know I can't sing. My wife told me that a long time ago. And I just believe her. <laughs> Woo! As a matter of fact, all Enoch had was God. And as I stated, that's all he needed. Friend, if you want to live for God, if you have a desire to walk with God and to live for God, you can't blame society. You can't blame the school systems. You can't blame your neighbors. You just need to look in the mirror and say, Oh, God, it's me that stands in the need of prayer. Amen. Praise God. You know, if Enoch could walk with God in the midst of an ungodly world, did you know that you and I can also walk with God in the days that we're living in? Now, if we're going to walk with God, we must. M-U-S-T. It's a must. Have an agreement with God. Are you listening to me? If you're going to walk with God, you have got to have an agreement with God. Over in the book of Amos, Amos chapter 3 and verse 3, the Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? How can two walk together so we know if Enoch walked with God, that Enoch agreed with God? Are you listening? So I 
in order for me to walk with God, I've got to agree with God. We've got to see sin as it is. And don't butter it up, make it, you know, uh, I've heard people say, oh, he just told a little white lie. If you've ever told a little white lie, tap your horn. Now, you heard that, and I want you to watch this. Now, listen to this. If you've ever told a big black lie, tap your horn. If you've ever lied like a yellow dog, just sit there. <laughs> you know, up in the mountains, up from where I'm from, where my wife's from, up on a lark of Brother Roby, they lied like a yellow dog up there. Over in Graham County in Robbinsville, Brother Zach, where I was born, they told little white lies. Makes no difference what kind of lie it is. If it's a lie, it's a sin in the eyes of God. We've got to agree with God on everything. I believe people ought to go to church. Why? Because the Bible says to fail not to assemble ourselves together. I'm going to agree with God. I agree with God on everything. I want to walk with God. You know, you've got to, in order to agree with God, you've got to hate sin. You've got to see sin as sin, okay? Now, you have a choice. You can walk by yourself. Or you can walk with God. Think about it. You can walk by yourself or you can walk with God. I don't like to walk by myself, so I'm going to walk with God. I am going to walk with God. And then secondly, we find that Enoch had a, he had a great testimony. Enoch had a great testimony. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5, before Enoch's translation, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. What is a testimony? Have you ever thought about what is a testimony? It's what others know about you, or it's what, uh, it's how you live your life in front of other people. You know, Enoch didn't have nothing to hide. Yes, old Enoch, he was the same every time you seen him. You saw him today, he was still old Enoch, walking with God. You saw him next week, he's still the same. He's just walking with God. Well, I believe people ought to be the same, don't you? If they're not the same, they ought to grow a little bit. Peter said to grow in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, old Enoch was the same every day. Enoch's testimony had God's approval. Is your walk with God this morning, does it have God's approval? Really, that's all that matters. That's really all that matters. And when we're walking with God and doing what we're supposed to be doing, you will have God's approval. You know, when I go out into the world, and I have to, I have to go out into the world. I have to go to Lowe's, I have to go to here, I have to go yonder. I don't put on a cap that says, I am a preacher. Are you listening to me? I do not put a cap on and say, I am a preacher. I don't wear a shirt that says on the back, I am a preacher. No, I don't have to do that. When I go out into the public, I try by the grace of God to treat everybody just like I want to be treated. I try to give a word of encouragement and a word of warning when I get the opportunity. And when you come to my house, I don't have to holler, honey, hide that beer. We don't have no beer. Are you listening to me? 
And if you come to my home, if you look around, you'll find a copy of the Word of God. I want to have a testimony. You know, when my children come by my coffin and they see Dad laying there, I want them to think in their heart and their mind, he sure did love the Lord. How do we know we love the Lord? One of the greatest attributes of loving God is to love the church. That's one of the biggest lies out of hell is I can live just as good at home as I can as them people that go to church. That is a lie straight out of the damn pits of hell. It sounded like I was cussing, didn't it? Out of the damn, out of the pits of hell. <laughs> Woo, all right. Praise God. All right. <clears throat> you know, I know I'm not perfect. Don't claim to be. Now, I'm going to tell you something else. Some of you not, not know this. And you'll probably be shocked. But my wife's not perfect either. She's not. I'm serious. You come to our house, we don't have a perfect home. We don't have a perfect marriage. We have a good marriage. We had an argument, I believe, it seemed to me like it was back in 87 or 88. When was that we had that argument? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> and we have a short word everybody ever day. But that's as far as it goes. Get along pretty doggone good after 53 or 54 years. Praise God. <laughs> There's one thing for sure. This pandemic didn't stop God's children a meeting at the house of the Lord. You know, the devil thought he had the victory, didn't he? The devil thought he had, had, he had the victory over the church. And I'll tell you something, folks, when people go up and down this highway, this church has got a testimony that they love God. When they uh, come by and they see uh, uh, these uh, uh, beautiful ladies, I believe it was all ladies. Let's see. Michael. Michael ain't a beautiful lady. <laughs> well, we see, they see these people up here singing. They look. And whether you realize it or not, they take and crack that window hoping they can hear just a little bit. Well, I'll tell you, one of these days, hey, listen to me, one of these days, I'm, the church's not going to be here. One of these days, they'll drive by here on the Sunday morning and there won't be nobody here. Are you listening to me? You know, you know the world probably thinks we're crazy out here this morning, singing, preaching the Word of God. I, I'm sure that they had some criticism of old Enoch. I'm sure that they talked about him a little bit. When he prophesied, he prophesied, Enoch prophesied over in Jude, verse 14. He said, The Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Like I stated in the beginning, we don't know a lot about Enoch. Just a little dab here in Hebrews, a little dab here in Jude, a little dab over here in Hebrews. But here in Jude says that he prophesied that the Lord was going to come back one day with ten thousands of his saints. How in the world, Brother Vaughn, did Jude, did uh, Enoch know about Revelation chapter 19. He saw the Lord Jesus coming back from heaven with ten thousands of his saints. I'll tell you, he didn't have a Bible, didn't have no TV. How did he know? God showed him. The Lord showed him. And I'll tell you folks, listen to me, if we'll walk with God, if we'll walk with God, God will show us some things. God will let us see some things that's not written down. If we'll only walk with God. Yes, 
Uh, uh, you folks sitting out there that hot car and me up here in this breeze coming through here. <laughs> and then last of all, you know, that's one thing everybody about everybody really likes. <laughs> that last point. It's kind of like the eyes on the cake. <laughs> oh, Lord. But we're not that way here. You folks would like to just stay here all day. Praise God. We get any more horns blowing. We get Brother Bob to preach, and then, and then we get Brother Zach. We get everybody to preach. And we leave here about 3 o'clock. That'd be good. If God was in us, that'd be great. And then, last of all, we, first we say we, walk, we want to look at the walk of Enoch with God. We looked at the testimony of Enoch. And then, last of all, let's look at the departure of Enoch. The Bible says that God took Enoch home with him. You know, I don't know if Enoch got up that morning. It's doubtful he knew that he was going to be leaving that day. He got up and whatever he was doing, maybe out in the field somewhere. Maybe down in one of the marketplaces. Preaching, warning, prophesying. But I do know one thing. Enoch was walking. And he had fellowship with God. God got to looking at Enoch. You see, Enoch died before the flood. Are you listening? I mean, he died. He, he went home to be with the Lord. Methuselah died probably the year of the flood. Methuselah probably died the year of the flood. But Enoch, he left out of here before the flood. He probably didn't tell nobody by, but the Lord just said, Enoch, I want you to come on up home. Now, it didn't take long for Enoch to get there. You know, here in America, we have what they call astronauts. And I believe in Russia, is it a cosmonaut, something like that? But Enoch was a Enoch Does that sound right? <laughs> I don't know one thing. He got out of here. I don't know what happened to his body, but God translated him. God changed him. Right now, where's old Enoch at? He's still up there with the Lord. He's still right up there with the Lord. Matter of fact, God might let those old saints of God uh, uh, get a glimpse one time. Uh, well, every once in a while, what's going on down here? I don't know when people get saved. Because I do know one thing. When somebody gets saved, there's rejoicing in heaven in presence of the angels. Hey, Mike. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, the Bible says, By faith, Enoch was translated. See, it was faith that took him out of here. That he should not see death and was not found. He was not found. What does that mean? That means Enoch's wife told somebody in the neighborhood, Enoch didn't come home today. What did they do? They get up a search party. Yeah. They searched for him. They looked for him. Enoch! Enoch! Enoch was home. He was with the Lord. The Bible says he was not found, so that means they searched for him. They might even put out a reward. Anyone know the whereabouts of Enoch? thousand dollars reward I don't know but I do know one thing before he was translated he had the testimony that he pleased God you know Enoch I want you to listen Enoch is a type in typology Enoch is a picture and a type of the New Testament church as Enoch was caught out of here one day the church is going to be translated. We're going out of here. Just like Enoch. We're going to go to be with the Lord. The one day the Lord himself is going to come and he's going to take us home. Now, child of God, if this virus is just a bump, it's just a bump in the road. That's all it is. Brother Carmen, it's a bump in the road. We're on our way home. Now, I want to say this to you. 
If you're here today and don't know the Lord Jesus, this is an opportunity you've never had. And this is an opportunity that you'll never have again. Who knows? We might all go home today. Who knows? The trump of God may sound after a while. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And we that are alive and remain, we're going to be called up to be with the Lord. Are you ready? Are you ready? If Jesus comes, he's coming. He said, if I go, he said, I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I would like to say if I'm addressing anyone here today that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're troubled about your soul. You want to know that you're going to heaven when you die or when Jesus comes. Why don't you call me, call Brother Vaughn, call one of these deacons. We'll come to your house. We'll meet you. By God's grace, we'll take a copy of the Word of God. and We'll show you how you can get to heaven. And that's really all that matters is going to heaven when you die. We love you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for coming today. And we pray that God will bless every one of you. Brother Vaughn, have you got something you want to say before we dismiss? All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Where are you going, Vaughn? Brother Vaughn's going down here. I'm going to go down here. Praise God, and I'm going to wave at every one of you. Might even throw you a little sugar. All the hearts and minds clear. Keep praying. Keep looking up. Jesus is coming. Uh, they're going to be uh, a bucket set at each driveway. If you've got a tithe or an offering you want to give to the Lord, that's going to be an opportunity to do that. Okay? All right. Oh, yeah, bring that young and all up here. Whoa. In your blanket, it'll help you a little bit. Come on up here, bring that little baby up here. <laughs> What's his name? Owen. Is it a girl or a boy? Right, can you hold him up high? Let's show him off. Man, ain't he a daddy? It's Owen. Tell him his name's Owen. Preacher, meet. Tell him, preacher, meet Owen. You got the mic. Uh, tell him to meet Owen. You got the mic. Meet Owen. <laughs> this is my little buddy here. Yeah, Praise <laughs> God. He's. Hey, let me tell you something, young. Hey, get you a good King James Bible. And a Ford. And a Ford. And a Ford. All righty. We love you.